With profound, humble gratitude and love to all venerated, enlightened masters, we bow to the Almighty in soulful gratefulness for gifting us with their holy, blessed presence. May all beings be awakened by their divine grace. Part two of four. Etc. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. I nostri programmi sono offerti in multilingue. Consultate su primmastertv.com barra schedule. Our union with the Lord once our evils have been dismissed is what is referred to in the Lord's words. The pure in heart will see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 Please continue watching for the uplifting spiritual insights of Immanuel Swedenborg, vegetarian. Vegan Side Effect Unexpected Protective Presence of Angels Sapmi is home to the indigenous Sami people whose lives are greatly enhanced by the spectacular northern lights and the beautiful wandering reindeer people. Greet the friendly locals with Modat Mana, which means how are you in the Sami language. I am Helmi. The enchanting Sami people appreciate the wise teachings of the masters of old and support you on your path to seeking spiritual enlightenment. May peace and harmony for all people soon become a reality through everyone turning to the compassionate vegan diet. Welcome to Heaven and Angels from Divine Providence by Emanuel Swedenborg, Vegetarian, Part 2 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. In the 18th century, a great Swedish scientist and inventor, at the height of his career, began to see visions of heaven, spirits, saints and angels. He saw Lord Jesus come to open his inner eye, which allowed him to travel in the celestial sphere and talk with different spiritual beings. This mystical experience transformed the scientist into an enlightened spiritual leader with a new understanding of Christianity. His name is Emanuel Swedenborg. From 1744 onwards, Emanuel Swedenborg spent over a decade of his life writing down what he saw in his spiritual voyages in more than two dozen books. His visions of heaven and the afterlife, his realization that God is love, and his discovery of the Holy Bible's deeper meanings are just some of the revolutionary topics he bravely documented. The life and works of this remarkable spiritual world explorer inspire people to this day. Let us continue with selections from Divine Providence, where Emanuel Swedenborg shares how we can be united with the Lord. The Lord's Divine Providence has as its goal a heaven from the human race. Our nature from creation enables us to be more and more closely united to the Lord. 
There are three distinct or vertical levels in us from creation. These three levels exist in each of us from birth and can be opened. As they are opened, we are in the Lord and the Lord is in us. We become involved in the first level, the one called earthly, when we are born, and we can gradually expand this level within us until we become rational. We become involved in the second level, the one called spiritual, if we live by the spiritual laws of the divine design, laws that are divine as to their truth. And we can also become involved in the third level, the one called heavenly, if we live by the heavenly laws of the divine design, laws that are divine as to their goodness. The Lord opens these levels within us, depending on the way we live. This is really happening in this world, but not so that we can sense or feel it until after we leave this world. As the levels are then opened and perfected, we are more and more closely united to the Lord. This union can intensify to eternity as we grow closer. For angels, it actually does keep intensifying to eternity. Still, no angel can enter into the first level of the Lord's love and wisdom or reach its boundary because the Lord is infinite and angels are finite. And there is no ratio between what is infinite and what is finite. As to how we can be more closely united to the Lord, this does not happen by simply knowing or by simply understanding or even by simply being wise. It happens by a life that is one with these states. Our life is our love, and there are many kinds of love. Broadly, there is love for what is evil and love for what is good. Love for what is evil is love for adultery, vengeance, cheating, blasphemy, and taking others' possessions. A love for evil finds delight and gratification in thinking about such things and in doing them. There are as many derivative motivations or desires of this love as there are evil deeds in which it takes specific form, and there are as many perceptions and thoughts of this love as there are distortions that nurture and justify these evil deeds. Now, since the Lord flows into everyone's life and flows through our life's desires into our perceptions and thoughts, and not the reverse, it follows that the closeness of our union with the Lord depends on the extent to which our love for evil and its desires, its compulsions, is dismissed. Further, since these compulsions have their home in the level of our being that deals with this world, and since anything we do that is rooted in that level feels as though it belongs to us, we need to dismiss the evils of this love with what seems to be our own strength. To the extent that we do this, the Lord draws near and unites us to Himself. We can see from this that the closeness of our union with the Lord depends on the extent to which we abstain from evils as coming from the devil and as blocking the Lord's entry. We can see that the union is closest for people who loathe these evils as though they were actually foul and fiery devils, since evil and the devil are one and the same, just as malicious falsity and Satan are one and the same. As a result, just as the Lord's inflow is into a love for what is good and its desires, and through these into our perceptions and thoughts, which derive all their truth from the fact that they stem from goodness we are engaged in, so the inflow of the devil or hell is into a love for what is evil and its desires, its compulsions, and through these into our perceptions and thoughts, which derive all their falsity from the fact that they stem from what is evil. As to how that union can seem closer and closer, the more completely the evils in our earthly self are dismissed by our abstaining from and rejecting them, the more closely we are united to the Lord. Further, the love and wisdom that are the Lord Himself seem to be closer in proportion to the union occasioned by love and wisdom. By the same token, He seems more distant as we spurn love and wisdom. 
our union with the Lord, once our evils have been dismissed, is what is referred to in the Lord's words, the pure in heart will see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 And I will make my dwelling with everyone who has my precepts and keeps them. John chapter 14 verses 21 and 23 Having the precepts is knowing, and keeping the precepts is loving, since it also says in the same passage that whoever keeps my precepts is one who loves me. Been vegan now for one year, it spawned and I've lost 15 kilograms or 33 pounds. Heart, blood pressure, and lipids all better. We'll continue this lifestyle. The Honorable Yon Gnar Vegan. Inspiring viewers, it was a delight to have your company today for words of wisdom. Coming up next is We Are All Animals interview with Nick and Kathy Coglin, vegans. Part 2 of 2 May the celestial melodies fill your lives with happiness and tranquility. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW.